Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's May 11th. These are your headlines. First of all, we're hearing about stripers into the 30 pound class showing up in the Cape Cod Canal. We're also got the first fluke reports of 2023 and porgies are now starting to move in across all of southern New England. Stay tuned for all that more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. And before we begin, we've got a couple of news items to cover. The first one is the Black Hall Outfitters season kickoff event. That's next weekend, so May 20th and 21st. That's at their Westbrook location. They got all kinds of stuff going on there. They got reps coming in from Van Stahl, from Daiwa, from Shimano, from Grundens, a whole bunch of others. They're going to be doing crazy giveaways. They're giving away a kayak, they're giving away sunglasses. There's more stuff here. Uh, so, they're giving away an Old Town Sportsman Big Water kayak, fully rigged. Uh, they're giving away a bunch of Grundens foul weather gear, uh, Sims tributary waiter set, uh, Costa sunglasses, a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and they're going to they're going to be having crazy sales so you're going to get all kinds of great deals if you're looking to stock up if you're looking to buy a kayak i know all their kayaks are going to be on sale you're definitely going to want to check that out so again that's next weekend may 20th to 21st you don't want to miss that and it's at their westbrook location other thing of course is the giveaway which is ongoing of course and um we're closing in on the end this one's going to wrap up on may 17th so you only got what six days until it's uh until it's over and uh, a lot of really good photos, but I also have lots of stuff I can give away. So I might even give away four prizes this time. Um, Going to give away two of the darters that I made. i uh, got a picture of one of those up on the screen here. Uh, so I give away two of those. I'm going to give away some stuff from Missouri. And i got a whole bunch of no live bait needed stuff. So I'm going to give away some of that as well. Uh, so get those photos in. you got six more days to impress me. Send them to me at danderson at thefisherman.com and just put giveaway in the subject line. Or you can text them to the number on the screen. The only rules are that it has to be a recent catch and it's got to show you in the photo. Get those in to me and next weekend we'll pick a winner and good chance we'll start another one right after that. Heading up north of the Massachusetts border, actually, we're going to start off in Maine this week. Got reports of striped bass up to 31 inches from the Saco River this week, so, you know, keeper or slot size fish have now made it all the way to southern Maine. Uh, heading back down into Massachusetts, I've been getting great reports from Cape Ann, Plum Island area, a lot of solid fish moving in. The biggest ones I've heard of have been 38 inches. Uh, I know there's fish out front, there's fish up inside the Merrimack, and uh, now, the fishing's been pretty good up there. For more on the striper fishing and some of the other fishing that's going on up there, let's toss it over now to James Jukes. Just out here in a local herring run. Just wanted to give everybody a shot at what's going on. The herring are crazy packed in here. Just an amazing sight. As far as the rest of the report, Dave, everything's going fantastic up here. You know, the freshwater fishing is still cooking along. Plenty of trout to be found. Bass, pike, pickerel, carp, sunfish, yellow perch, you, you name it, it's up here. It's going. And almost all the local ponds you can find access and get in there to fish. Now, under the striper scene, my goodness. There is no holdover fishing anymore, that's for sure. The stripers have invaded from Lawrence all the way out to the mouth. Guys are hammering on clams, plugs, mackerel, worms, you name it, they're getting them on it. Anyways, Dave, that's it. I'm enjoying the morning here and watching all these herring have some fun with each other. All right. Heading down out of the... Uh... Cape Ann area they were going through Boston. I didn't get a lot of reports from the Boston area this week. I know there's stripers in Boston Harbor. I've heard about some flounder in Situate Harbor, but not much else than that. Uh, once we get down to Plymouth, lots of stripers in that area from the North River, South River, Duxbury Bay, um, and even just heading all the way out toward the canal like Ellisville and along, along those beaches. A um, lot of stripers in the area. 
they're ranging in size from like 26 inches all the way up to almost 40 inches and uh, good daytime bite in that area um, a lot of guys getting them on like smaller spooks like maybe an X walk or something like that uh, but a lot of top water action also guys doing well on paddle tails you might want to try that five inch uh, no live bait needed that would probably crush them up there right now um, so a lot of striper action in that area, jumping inland from there uh, in the Plymouth area. A lot of freshwater fishing going on, of course. I always think of uh, Plymouth as like the Minnesota of Massachusetts because it's the land of a thousand lakes. So many ponds and lakes in Plymouth and all of them seem to have something to offer. It's great bass fishing all throughout Plymouth here and a lot of good reports there. And uh, still great trout fishing all over the place in Plymouth as well. Lots of, lots of stocked ponds in that area, so uh, plenty of action in the Plymouth region. Jumping over the canal onto the Cape, um, starting to see more and more and more striped bass reports now. Um, and it's been a lot of reports coming in from the bay side of the Cape, which surprises some people. You know, you think that the, the ocean side would populate first, but that actually isn't the case. It's, the water's a lot warmer on the Cape Cod Bay side, so some of those fish just sneak through the canal and they just take a right and head up that way. So you got fish in Barnstable Harbor, you got fish around Scorton Creek. You got fish in some of those other estuaries all the way up to like first encounter out in East Ham. Uh, we're hearing about schoolie sized fish out that way. You jump over though to the outside and um, it's very good fishing on the Nantucket Sound shorelines and into all those estuaries. As soon as you make that turn at Chatham it gets a little tougher. Although over the last few days or so they're starting to see those fish making the turn now. In fact Goose Hummock posted this cool uh, drone footage that was taken by Matt Whittle. And uh, it shows some bodies of nice sized stripers moving into those waters right now. Uh, so it looks like that problem will solve itself over the next few days uh, or so. But the better bass fishing has definitely been down along that uh, Nantucket shoreline. Switching gears from stripers, we're going to talk about flounder for a minute. Uh, Sisuit area has been putting out some good numbers of flounder. I know Jason Colby's getting fish out there. I know the guys on the Gray Dolphin are getting fish there. Um, and that bite has been pretty reliable. Uh, you head out to Provincetown, you're probably going to find some flounder in Provincetown Harbor as well. Uh, jumping back into the middle of the Cape, freshwater fishing's firing off just like it is in Plymouth. You've got good bass fishing, you've got great trout fishing. Some of the bass are on the beds now, so uh, that's another option you guys have if you like to pitch to, to bedding fish. Uh, getting back toward the saltwater things, uh, the canal is coming into its own and it's coming into its own early which is not that much of a surprise I guess everything's happening early this year uh, but for more on that I'm gonna step aside for the triumphant return of East End Eddie. Good morning Dave welcome back to the banks of the story Cape Cod Canal things are looking great here uh, in the last week uh, the most productive spot has been the herring run uh, Joe Euphrazio was using a Uzuri bone uh, twitch bait caught a 32 inch and uh, Michael Lair was got into some uh, top water action, another 32 inch. And uh, Dylan Campbell, 17 year old kid from uh, Plymouth, was his first uh, striper of the year. So people are doing well, and uh, the uh, breaking tides that started uh, for the weekend after the full moon on Friday have really paid off. This morning, today is Monday, this morning um, I went to, I fished at Aptuxet, that's where I am now. I got an east tide behind me there. And uh, the guy next to me, Ed Bresniak caught 14 fish. The biggest one was 44 inches. He was using a, uh, a Green Mac Savage. And uh, I caught five fish, a couple of 32 inches and a 33 inch, and then a couple more that were smaller than that, all on a uh, Jobo Jr., Green Mac colored Jobo Jr., made by Guppy Laws, the great Wayne Hess. I love that law. I love the Jr. because it floats. Um, so it's been really good here. Uh, there are still herring in the herring run. It's still live herring coming out. Not as many as before, but uh, uh, the biggest catch of the year, of the, of the season so far, as far as I know, is Bill on the Grill Prudo, who caught a 35-pounder uh, west, uh, west of the Bourne Bridge. And he was using a uh, parrot-colored Super Strike bullet that swims just below the surface. Looks like a tropical fish, which just proves, you know, we, we try to match the hatch, put put a lure in the in the water that, that looks like, you know, the, the prevailing bait, but which is what I did today because it was mackerel in the water. But, you know, Billy puts in this thing that looks like a parrot, and he ends up with a 35-pounder. So congratulations to him. He's a great guy, and we're all happy for him. So my tip of the week is if you're in the market for a canal bike, 
buy one that's light, made of aluminum, aluminum uh, or some kind of light metal. And uh, you know, you'll thank me when you have to have to fish in hot all day, and you got to pick up that heavy bike. So if you put, if you're going to put your bike in the back of a pickup truck or on a, a carrier, it's easier to have a light one. Especially when you get older and qualify for Medicare like me. So you young guys will be older someday. So, anyways, till next time, keep your hook sharp and your lines tight. Subscribe to the Fisherman Magazine today and compete in the Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. It's the Fisherman subscriber-only season-long region-wide multi-species fishing competition, the Winner Steiger Craft, and many more prizes. Subscribe, fish, win. Thanks, Eddie. Good to have you back and uh, looking forward to your weekly reports. Um, I know you're a popular guy on, on the report video and we definitely really appreciate you for that. Heading out of the canal into Buzzards Bay, uh, a lot of bass fishing going on out in Buzzards Bay. Uh, all sizes of fish represented from 20 inches to 30 pounds, probably bigger than that even. Uh, but all along that shoreline from Mattapoisett Harbor to the Wareham River to the Wee Weantic to the Buttermilk Bay, all the way up to that bottleneck heading into the canal. There are stripers all over that area. There's bluefish in the area too. The biggest ones I've heard of have been just over double digits, like 10, 11 pounds. Um, I would guess that there are some even larger fish mixing in out there. Uh, also seeing some scup reports now coming in from that region and some really nice ones being caught. Uh, and then the last thing of course is black fishing, which has been solid. Uh, guys are doing well. The fish are up on the shallower side for the most part. Um, some of them around the Elizabeth, some of them are back out in the, on some of the breakwaters in Nantucket Sound, but the best fishing seems to be, at least as far as what I've heard, has been more along, again, that mainland shoreline from Lake Marion out to New Bedford. Uh, so some good black fishing going on in that region. And to wrap things up in the Massachusetts report, we're going to head inland, we're going to get a tandem of video reports. We're going to start things off with Steve from Steve's UV Leaves. The big story for today the Connecticut River has finally cleared up. It's dropped down to a fishable level. It's not completely clear, but it's clear enough to get the fish on the chew. Uh, the smallie bite has been really good. Pike, walleye have been extremely active. Uh, that bite really never slowed down. Um, the tributaries, both in Connecticut and Mass, have slowed down considerably. Uh, but the big news is the arrival of some decent sized stripers and a whole lot of shad. Um, the, I've gotten reports of stripers being caught up to 41 inches uh, and a lot of schoolies. There is a lot of fish in the river right now. The shad bite has just exploded in the last three days. It's getting better and better every day. And I would imagine going into the weekend, um, it's gonna be really good. They're already lifting fish in Holyoke, which is a good thing. Um, that should keep the bite going as long as they keep lifting fish. Um, spoons and darts have been producing fish. So whatever you want to throw, they're on the chew. Get out there and get them. See you guys next week. And to wrap up the Massachusetts portion of the report, we're going to go even a little further inland now. We're going to talk to Roy Leva. Hey Dave, Roy Leva here with this week's Western Mass Report. Got me a good one. Uh, and this swamp land, uh, just throwing a weedless swim bait to all this uh, flooded timber and, and, and everything else. Uh, I don't know, I think these fish are gonna spawn soon, especially with the next couple of days being 80 degrees. Uh, I think this is it. I mean, I wish, I wish it wasn't because today's been amazing. But other than that, you know, trout fishing continues to be good out here in Western Mass and the shad fishing and striper fishing out on the Connecticut River um, and upwards of the Housatonic uh, have all been great. Um, you know, I mean, right now it's just sky's the limit. Uh, I might get out for pike uh, or carp over the next couple days or actually over the next couple weeks now if, if, if these bass start doing their thing. So uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Um, catch you later. Jumping over into Rhode Island, things are just popping off in Rhode Island right now. We've got so many species to target right now. You can target fluke, you can target scup, you can target blackfish, bluefish, weak fish, stripers, um, and plenty of freshwater fishing as well. Lots of, lots of trout fishing still going on in Rhodey, lots of bass fishing still going on in the Rhodey ponds. Um, on the eastern side of the state, stripers are definitely dominating. For more on that and some of the other fisheries that are happening on the eastern half of Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecki. Thanks, Dave. Hey guys, nice to be back reporting for the East Bay area of Rhode Island and uh, South Coast Massachusetts. Um, Lots of stuff going on out there, so uh, we're going to get right to it. Um, we'll start off first in uh, Mount Hope Bay. Uh, big flux of bait have come in 
mainly pogies, bigger pogies, uh, into the Taunton River. Uh, and there's some big bass on their tails right now. Uh, so if you're out in that area, fishing up towards the old Brightman Street Bridge, uh, there's, there's a good chance you're going to get uh, some fish in the 30-pound class. Uh, also scattered throughout Mount Hood Bay, all along the Fall River shores, down to Tivenin, to the mouth of Sakonet, Kikamewit. Uh, there's a lot of bass in there, and guys are finding big, big schools of them uh, on their sounders, and they're just getting on top of them, they're jigging them, they're throwing soft plastics, they're throwing top waters. Uh, these fish are on the feed right now. So uh, a good area that uh, I've done really well at, and it's uh, been Spar Island, which uh, is kind of in Bristol, Swansea line off, off to a point. Um, it's, it's a great little island or it's a series of two islands together there that um, holds bait really, really well. So uh, we've been doing well there <laughs> with striped bass. Um, also out there, we've been doing uh, good on Tatog. Um, and, and we're not just fishing those big structure areas that we find. We're actually doing well when we find like a little, little small spot, of, which is probably a couple of rocks or so uh, off of some bigger structure. Um, doing better there than we are on the bigger structure. Uh, I mean, I guess sometimes we say that that structure is uh, overfished and because uh, most people would, would just jump on it when you see it and you sound it. But uh, we found a couple of small rock piles um, that didn't look like they were fished too hard probably. And, uh, you know, we've been connecting with fish there. Um, the uh, freshwater scene around here actually has been pretty good. Uh, shinies have been working really well. Uh, I've seen people drop shot worms also uh, and doing well on those. Um, moving up into the Warren and Barrington uh, rivers, uh, there has been a cinder worm hatch. I'm not sure if anybody's been fishing there and saw that. It did make the fishing a little difficult over the weekend, but uh, if you would match the hatch, uh, you've probably been doing well. And it still was a little bit slow, but there are, I tend to see that a bunch of uh, micro bass, the diaper stripers, have really moved into a lot of these local waters here, uh, especially the Coles River. I couldn't catch anything over 20 inches the other night. Um, and, and that was po partially due because there was a, a cinder worm hatch there also. So uh, most of the fish that we did catch, uh, I was using a Zoom Fluke in the pink color. And uh, I, I connected probably <laughs> for about 15 fish or so. But normally I've been catching like 25, 30 fish at a pop. Uh, but it was a little harder to catch them. Uh, so if you're out fishing in those areas, um, boy, there's just lots of opportunities right now. Haven't heard of any blue fish uh, coming up into the rivers yet. Uh, but uh, I, I'm going to say any time now, maybe when you're seeing this report. And, and I think some of the best chances uh, for bluefish uh, over in this this side of the bay, in Mount Hope Bay, would be uh, more towards the Sakonet River. Uh, the mouth of that, a common fence point, uh, or maybe under the Mount Hope Bridge. Uh, so uh, also the other opportunities you could be having pretty soon uh, would be fluke. Uh, Fluke have moved in, uh, I, I believe, into Long Island Sound. I've seen some guys in New York area catching them. Uh, a good spot for that would be up into the Sakonet River, just uh, just past the uh, Fogland Point, uh, going towards Newport. Um, that'll probably be your best bet to catch a fluke early season there. Um, and I mainly like to use uh, the local squid on a jig rather than the gulp, which uh, I love to use the gulp, but I always start off with that squid just to see uh, if I could get the bite there. Uh, so lots of opportunities for all kinds of fish. Everything's coming into play. Uh, scup any day now. I haven't heard much about it, but uh, if you're out in the East Bay uh, and you're fishing, uh, there's a good chance uh, you're going to do really well. So uh, until next week, uh, tight lines, guys. Heading up into the bay, uh, into Narragansett Bay and sort of bleeding over into Mount Hope Bay, the striper action is really starting to mound up now. 
We're starting to see more bunker in there. We're starting to see more and bigger bass. Uh, the flutter spoons have been crushing it over the last week or so. You see a lot of guys doing it like right around the Mount Hope Bridge. Uh, so you know those fish are starting to make the transition into Mount Hope Bay. Um, so that fishery is looking really good for more on what's going on in the bay and some of the other fisheries in that general area. Let's toss it over now to Coral Aiello from Sarah Star Charters. Hi Dave, Coral here from Sarah Star Charters with the Rhode Island Fishing Report. Um, the spring is off to a excellent start. We are seeing some really big bass this time of year. Normally the size class we see right now doesn't show up uh, at least for another week or so. Uh, but we're already catching fish in the 40 pound range. I mean, we caught one the other day on charter uh, that was pushing 40 pounds, um, a little over 44 inches. I mean, there's tons of fish to be caught. The stripers, there's bluefish. Um, but yeah, the size of the striped bass is definitely different this year. Uh, we are still seeing tons of schoolies. I've seen tons of small fish around, you know, on the surface and, and we've caught a few. Um, but normally the, the class, the, these big class fish that we're catching don't usually show up a little bit later. So we're seeing those a little earlier this year. Um, the bluefish have showed up um, in the last few days. I know reports of those are being caught. The tog bite has kind of been hot and cold. Um, so definitely, definitely been targeting the stripers right now because that's just, it's, you can't miss. Um, they're eating pretty much anything. I, I know that's not a secret anymore, but the flutter spoons, um, are pretty much killing it, but you can catch them on top water, paddle tails, bucktails. Um, they're not picky right now. You know, you'll see fish from Providence um, all in Narragansett Bay, and they are starting to slowly filter their way out front um, as the water gets warm. So I'm excited to see what the season brings. We are off to a pretty great start. Striped bass fishing is definitely dominating right now. Um, as you heard from TJ and from Coral, a lot of bass fishing going on in the bay, a lot of great catches from the bay. Uh, all the way up to Providence, we're hearing about good surf fishing going on. Uh, I heard a cool story from one of our writers, Greg Taylor. He ran into a uh, father and son duo on the beach. Uh, there were some stripers around, Greg was catching some of them, and uh, these guys were these guys were struggling a little bit to get a fish on, so um, he gifted them a 401 uh, SoCo swimmer, as he calls it, this, uh, this uh, plug here on the screen. And uh, the father texted Greg back a couple days later, said they turned his son, Giorgio, into a striper maniac. The kid's been slaying stripers on that swimmer and uh, has completely converted to uh, striper mania. So you got to love a story like that. And, uh, you know, good on Greg for, for being able to do that and, you know, wanting to be generous enough to help somebody out. That's, that's a really great story and great to hear. Heading out of the bay... Lots of striped bass along the Narragansett shorelines, lots of striped bass around uh, Newport and Aquidneck Island, and all along South County, guys are bombing them too. Uh, there's been bluefish and squid and stripers around the breachways. Guys are catching fish there day and night. Up inside the ponds, there's been good striper action. Up inside the Pocketuck River, there's been good striper action. I have not actually heard of any fluke caught in Rhode Island waters yet, but if I was looking for one, I'd be heading out toward Block Island. That's where they always seem to show up first. Um, we are hearing some porgy action or scup action um, all along that area. Any of these rocky spots are going to have some fish now. Uh, you're going to want to fish mid-depths, you know, 20 to 35 feet or so seems to be where I'm hearing most of the action coming from. Uh, and then togging has been phenomenal. Um, the approaches to the bay, so the East Passage, the West Passage, the Connaught River, they all have fish. And then you get outside, you go around Beaver Tail, you go around the front of Newport, you get out to Price's Neck. Maybe you go down around to the center wall off of Point Judith. All these places have tog right now, and the fishing is just popping right now. So um, fishing in Rhode Island is just fantastic right now, and uh, there's no reason to, uh, to hold back anymore. You get to get out there and catch some fish, take some pictures, and send them in to me. Over in Connecticut, we got lots going on in Connecticut as well. Um, in the eastern half of the Sound, there's lots of striped bass. Uh, most of these fish are topping out like just under 40 inches, so you're getting fish from like 20 to like 38 inches for the most part. Thames River, Bluff Point, they've been good. Uh, Niantic Bay has had a lot of fish. The Connecticut River has been putting out some good numbers of fish as well. Water temps are just about optimum in the Connecticut River right now for top water action for some, you know, higher speed uh, soft plastic stuff. So for a little more on that, we're going to toss it over now to Captain Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. For this week's fishing report, there's still a lot of flooding going on, so if you're navigating in the rivers, be really careful. There's logs, trees, all kinds of debris coming down. Water's still pretty dirty. Expect that to clear up soon. We have really great weather forecasted, and as that water starts to clean up, uh, water temps start to climb, and 
we're going to start to experience some good fishing. But uh, there are some good striped bass around, uh, ranging from schoolie size, slot size, and over slot size. Uh, we've caught them on soft plastics uh, um, paired with the jig head, and also uh, vertical jigging um, lures like the uh, Shimano current sniper jig or a diamond jig uh, when they're in deeper water. Uh, I expect the bass fishing to continue to improve. Uh, also, we caught our first bluefish of the year, and there were some really big, aggressive, uh, clean gator bluefish, like 10 plus pound bluefish. That was a lot of fun. So things are definitely headed in the right direction. Uh, we have some openings for spring trips and uh, have openings for June as well, and that's gonna be prime time. So contact us to book a trip. So when we're looking for fish, uh, we have a deep channel off of uh, the side of the boat here, about 15, 16 feet deep. And uh, what's interesting is you would think in the middle of daytime, these fish would be hunkered down um, in the deeper water. But early spring right now, a uh, sunny day, and these fish are actually moving up onto the shallower water. And um, you know they're gonna look for that thermal refuge where we have a little bit warmer water, the sun's hitting that darker bottom, and these mud flats are um, slightly warmer than the uh, channel, and they're they're moving up onto the flats. Um, again, you know, this is going to change from day to day, so that's why using the electronics is so important. And there's never going to be you're never going to find the fish in the same spot day in and day out. They they are going to move around and transition from deeper water to shallower water. Um, and uh, you know, you want to think about the conditions you're fishing and naturally using. Uh, the electronics um, to locate and to determine where the fish are. Heading up the Connecticut River Valley uh, onto some of the more freshwater stuff that's going on. We're going to throw it over now to Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody. Uh, with flows uh, dropping and uh, water temperatures warming up, uh, fishing's improving quite a bit here in central Connecticut. Uh, this is a great time of year to explore some of the smaller tributaries of the Connecticut River uh, for multi-species uh, fishing action. Uh, panfish, especially perch and, and bluegills and some other sunfish, uh, rock bass, uh, push up into these streams really hard this time of year. Even some pretty large smallmouth can push up into these kinds of waters. Uh, and there's always plenty of other stuff. Some of my absolute favorites are fall fish uh, and white suckers. Uh, they're heavily underrated fish, but an absolute blast on light tackle. Uh, it's very simple fishing a lot of the time. Uh, you can still fish with worms on the bottom or uh, for fall fish, fish under a float. Uh, flies work very, very well. Uh, it's a great way to kill some time and some great action on light tackle. Uh, so get out there, good luck. Heading out of the Connecticut River, uh, getting a lot of reports from Montauk and from the race of striped bass showing up. And that's a little early, uh, especially for the race. But again, it's not a big surprise. Everything's early this year. A lot of slot size fish out in the race. Um, so get them while you can before that emergency uh, declaration takes hold, which I think is going to happen around the end of May, the beginning of June. Um, but there's lots of like 31 to 35 inch fish out there right now. So uh, get out there and get on them. I mean, that's just, they're there by the thousands right now. And the same could be said for Montauk. There's also some much larger fish in the mix there. So great diversity of sizes there and just a great fishery going on. On the fluke end of things, you're going to have to head over to New York. You're going to have to go to Peconic Bay, you're going to have to go to Northport, you're going to have to go to Port Jeff. Um, that's where the action is and that's always where the action is. The fluke come in over that way and then they make their way over to Connecticut side. So um, if fluke is your number one target, you're going to have to head to Yankee territory for now. Um, heading along the coast from the Connecticut River, the bass fishing gets better you know, incrementally as you move further and further to the west. Um, and if, you know, and it culminates in some seriously big fish that are now coming out of the East River. I know Max had a fish that was pushing 50 pounds this week. I think it was 48 officially. Um, Flutter spoons are crushing it there. Mojos, live bunker, chunk bunker, docks, all kinds of stuff are getting it done out there. There's lots of bass, lots of bunker, lots of action. Uh, the other thing we're hearing about is an increased weak fish action out there. So, uh, you know, we all know West Haven Bar is a good spot, but they're getting them, you know, they're getting them all around. They're getting them in Milford Harbor, they're getting them in Norwalk Harbor, they're getting them, uh, any one of these little estuaries is a good place to try. We just came off that new moon, I mean the full moon, and the full moon tends to really fire those fish up, so the weak fishing is on fire right now. Uh, I know we got two dream boat entries this week, 
uh, from that particular region. And uh, things are looking really good if you want to catch a weak fish. Uh, as we head out further to the west, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. Man, what a week for striper fishing, leading up to the full moon and then the backside of this moon. We've seen some really big bass push into our waters and the bunker are moving in more and more day and day. Me and my fiance Lauren got out a lot this past week and we're going to go out today. And we had a lot of nice fish on flutter spoons and on the troll on mojos. We've seen fish to 48 pounds this past week in our local waters. Places like 11B, 28C has the best bite right now. Diamond jigging, trolling, flutter spoons. The fish have been coming up on the surface, chasing bunker in the rips. So, you know, guys with a fly rod has been doing good. Throwing stuff like Musky Mania's dock, spooks, poppers. And then moving down to our west, places like Captain's Island, 32A, has really produced a lot of quality fish. And moving farther down, Mamaroneck, Hempstead, down to Execution, City Island, we're seeing big schools of fish pushing through. So now is the time, I said it last week, if you're a striper fisherman and your boat's not in, you better get it in now because this is one of the best like spring striper fishing we've seen in a long time. On the porgy side, we've seen Oyster Bay has been producing a lot of porgies. These fish just start moving into deeper water and then onto our side. If you want to try our side, I've tried places like Green's Ledge, 28C, the backside of 26, and Kakini Shoals. Fluke fishing to start off has been slow. We've seen some keepers, but there's been a lot of shorts. Guys are either fishing Sherwood Island beaches, drifting up in tight, and then they keep bumping out and out and out in deeper water to see where the bite is along Calf Pasture Beach. And then a lot of people have been shooting across in Smithtown Bay, inside Eaton's Neck, and then Sand City. Remember, you want to cover different ranges of depths. So if you nail a fish, you want to mark it and then keep pounding that area because odds are there's going to be more fluke with them. On the freshwater side, the Saugatuck Reservoir is fishing well. We've seen a lot of bass action, a couple trout, and some walleye. Anglers are using anything from crankbaits, you know, jigs, and then for live baits, shiners are always the best there, and then of course, night crawlers. Our local trout streams are also fishing well. Places like Nauk River, Mianus River, Saugatuck River, and the Mill River in Fairfield. We've seen a bunch of browns and rainbows on like spinners, rooster tails, small rapalas, and then, you know, drifting trout worms, trout magnets, you name it. All right, everyone, it's springtime and the fishing's hot. Get out there and catch some fish. Good luck. And that's what I have for you guys in the New England reports, but now let's take a short flight down to Costa Rica, hear what's going on at Marina Pez Bay. Hey there guys, this is Ben Gilmore with this week's fishing report from here in Costa Rica and the Marina Pez Vela. We got a really nice sailfish bite going on right now. Double digit sailfish bites out there. We were in there yesterday. Um, really nice sailfish bite going on. We're going back out there right now. So wish us luck out there today, guys. We got a few blue marlin offshore as well. Some Dorado and the yellowfin tuna bite has been really nice as well. Only yesterday, my friend caught one 120 pounds. Yellowfin tuna, so really, really nice. Inshore, we've had some good Kubera snapper, some rooster fish, and some big old snook down at our river mouths. Come down and see us, guys. We've got some great fishing June, July, August. We'd love to see you here at the Marina Pez Vela. This is Ben Gilmore, back to you guys. And it's that time of year again. The dream boat is kicking off, and here's your first standings update of 2023. Now it's time for the Dream Boat Update. A lot has happened in the first 10 days of the Dream Boat Challenge. For starters, we're seeing a ton of weak fish coming in, eight to be exact. The top three are as follows. Jose Negron is holding third place with a 6.11 pounder taken from Connecticut waters. In second place, we have another Connecticut fish from Joe Apanowicz at 6.75 pounds. And finally, Richard Boyce leads with his 7.7 .7 pounder taken from New York waters. Porgy fishing also seems to be showing signs of early life. We have two entries to report. A 2.2 pounder landed by Long Islander Logan Schwarz and a 3.04 pounder entered by Bobby Cifarelli, hailing from Banford, Connecticut. We also saw our first Gator Bluefish in the contest, an impressive 15.88 pounder entered by Eddie from West Islip, New York. Lastly, we have a single 3.1 pound Sea Robin to report landed by Brian Zembreski of East Northport, New York. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21-foot Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. 
And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Thanks for bearing with me as I'm battling a cold and apparently uh, allergies as well. So uh, it was a photo finish here, but I got through it. Um, but one thing I have to encourage you to do if you're not is subscribe to The Fisherman. Head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You get a full gamut of what we offer. We cover the entire region from Delaware all the way up to Maine. And we cover every fishery you can think of in every discipline in that region. So it could be surf fishing for stripers off Jersey. It could be heading out to the canyons for yellowfin. It could be doing Cape Bluefin. It could be going up to Maine for smallmouth. It could be heading out to the Niagara River for lake trout and steelhead. It's all covered. We cover it all. For 30 bucks, you're going to get 12 issues sent to your house. Those are paper issues that you can read wherever you want to come in the mailbox. You're also going to get 26 digital issues sent to your email box. In addition to that, as a bonus, you're also going to get access to years worth of back issues. All that for 30 bucks. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. If you're still not convinced, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube. And hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. I appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.